So another very interesting problem and what you learn in this problem is how you can utilize Newton's laws of motion as well as electrostatic force as described by Coulomb's law, how you can put them together to solve certain numerical problems. So what we have in this problem are two balls, each of mass m and each has a positive charge q. And the question is, if the separation is x between these two balls, then what is that value of x such that the two balls are stationary or are in equilibrium, they're not moving. What's also given in the problem is that the value of theta is very small. While it looks big over here, but the problem says that it's very small and both are hanging by a string of length L. So how we'll approach this problem is that first of all, we'll put all the relevant forces acting on one of the balls. So let's go ahead and label all the forces. So the first force we should go ahead and label is the force of tension in the string. And let's call that T. Now, if this is T, then we can resolve this also into its respective components. And first of all, we need to realize that this angle is also theta. And if this is the case, then we can say that this component of tension, that is this vertical component is T cos theta. And the horizontal component over here is T sine theta. Now, what we also know is that since both the balls have similar charge, they will repel each other. So there is an electrostatic force also. And on this ball, it will act in this direction. So let's go ahead and label that as Fe or the electrostatic force of repulsion between the two balls. What we also have is Mg acting directly in the downward direction. So this is kind of a free body diagram for this mass M having a charge Q. And if this ball is to remain stationary, you'll quickly observe that T sine theta needs to be equal to Fe. That's the only condition when it will be in equilibrium. So let's go ahead and write this equation where we say that T sine theta is equal to the electrostatic force Fe which we know is nothing but k into q square because both balls have same charge divided by the distance between the two balls the square of the distance rather now we we can also say that if the ball is in equilibrium then the vertical component t cos theta should equal mg if t cos theta was not equal to mg the ball would either have gone down or it would have moved up so this equation gives us a value of t which is nothing but t equals mg upon cos theta. Now, if you go ahead and substitute the value of t in the first equation, what we get is mg upon cos theta multiplied by sine theta is equal to k q square upon x square. So if you simplify this further, this becomes mg tan theta is equal to k q square upon x square. Now, we can also say that tan theta is equal to opposite side and opposite side here, you can say would be x upon 2, that is half of this distance, divided by the base, which is nothing but L square minus x upon 2 square. Now, if it's given that theta is very small, your x by 2 value should also be very small, which therefore makes x by 2 whole square even smaller, in which case we can write tan theta is equal to x upon 2 divided by L, because this component becomes 0 and under root of L square becomes L. So if we put the value of tan theta equal to x by 2 upon L, in this equation, what you get is mg into x upon 2L is equal to k q square upon x square, which therefore gives x cube equals 2L k q square upon 
m into g and if you put k equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught then this equals 2 l upon mg q square into k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught then you can see that this cancels once so you get 2 over here and what you get as x is x equals one third of l q square upon 2 mg pi epsilon naught this raised to the power 1 upon 3. So the conclusion is that the balls will be in equilibrium if they are separated by this distance or in other words horizontal component of force of tension would equal to the electrostatic force between the two balls and therefore it will keep them in equilibrium.